Bulimia nervosa can potentially cause many health issues. So I want to talk about the consequences that are potential when it comes to bulimia. First, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. I'm a Long Island eating disorder specialist, and I post on this channel twice a week all about eating disorders, body image issues, and general mental health. So if any of that interests you, please click the subscribe button down below. Also, while you're at it, click on the email registration link to subscribe to my email list in the description. If you do that at the beginning of each week, I will be sending out a newsletter. I'll let you know all the content that I have coming out for you that week. But an added bonus is I create resources to go, to go along with many of my videos. And at the beginning of the week, I will send you out any of those resources that go along with the videos that are going to be coming your way. And it's really intended for you to get the most out of those videos and the content that I put out. It's really worthwhile that we talk about health consequences, real physical health consequences that may occur as a result of an eating disorder. Um, and I want to go through, and in, in this video, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to go through each of the main eating disorders that we hear about and talking about some of the health consequences regarding them. Um, because it is really important to confront all of this so that you are really aware and knowledgeable about what potentially you are causing to your body um, because it's really powerful to be aware and knowledgeable about that. And in this video, I really also want to emphasize that no one is immune. If you are struggling with an eating disorder, it really can have physical consequences, short term and long term. And I don't care what age you are. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care how long you've had it. Everyone is able to develop um, physical consequences from it. So if you have been struggling, obviously the longer you struggle, the more of a risk factor that is, that the more risk you have to develop these issues. But some of these happen very early on and some of them we can't even tell when it's going to happen. Uh, sometimes it happens earlier on, sometimes it happens later on, sometimes it happens never. I really wanna talk about some of the different consequences that are aligned with bulimia. So number one, of course, mostly pertaining to the purging behavior is that there's dehydration. Obviously there's a risk for dehydration and a lot of people overlook dehydration and especially when you're younger, you don't really understand what that means. Yes, I don't have enough water, but what can really occur from that? And that is actually very, very dangerous. Our body is made up of a very large percentage of water. And when we don't have enough of it, there's issues that come along with it. Um, obviously, possibly fever, delirium, low blood pressure could be an issue. Confusion could be an issue. Um, but left unchecked, really, it can develop into kidney issues, liver issues. Seizures could occur as a result of dehydration. Another thing that could happen with bulimia, especially very early on, is electrolyte imbalances. We have electrolytes within our system and it's important that we have them. However, when you're purging, and this is why all these symptoms are also potential when you are just sick and you have a stomach virus. So imagine actually inducing these symptoms for, or these, um, these uh, behaviors for a while. Um, it can really be a concern, obviously much more so than if you have a couple days where you have a stomach virus. For instance, I remember whenever I had a stomach virus, my mom always would go out and buy a lot of Gatorade and make sure I kept drinking it because uh, he, she was concerned of dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Um, so when it comes to bulimia and you're often engaging in purging behaviors, um, you may have imbalances in your electrolytes and that can cause its own set of issues, including fatigue, lethargy. Uh, it could include irregular heartbeat. It can include faintness. Also nausea, more vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, a lot of things could occur from this. And even worse so, potentially seizures or convulsions could occur as a result of electrolyte imbalances. Other potential consequences pertain to your heart, which obviously is a very important organ. At best, it's an irregular heartbeat. At worst, it's heart failure. Again, no one is immune. These are very, very serious risk for someone who has bulimia. Acid reflux could also develop as a result of engaging in purging behaviors. Um, and obviously acid reflux could be very, very painful and very distressing for a lot of people. Um, so it, you have an increased likelihood of developing it if you are struggling with 
pur purging behaviors. Another thing which is really, really scary that a lot of people don't realize is that you, if you are engaging in purging through inducing vomiting, you have an increased likelihood of esophageal rupture, essentially meaning rupture of the esophagus, which is this part of your body. Um, so this is something really interesting, um, not in a good way, but it's interesting because what happens is that we can't tell you when that'll happen. You can theoretically have an esophageal rupture if you just have a stomach virus and you're throwing up from that. I'm not trying to scare anyone. However, I'm trying to illustrate that really it's a law of probability at this point. If you increase the amount of times that you're doing something, the risk is also therefore increased. So while if you play baseball, you always have a risk of getting hit with the ball. If you play baseball for a career, you're going to have a higher likelihood of getting hit with the ball than if you were just playing for a one-time game with your friends. So that's what I mean by this. So additionally, if you are struggling with purging through inducing vomiting, what could happen is that you have the risk of esophageal rupture. I can't tell you if it'll happen the first time you induce vomiting. I can't happen, tell you if it'll happen the 57th time that you, that you induce vomiting. I can't tell you if it'll ever happen. It could happen the last time that you decide to purge. It could happen whenever, we don't know, but there's increased likelihood with the increased amount of behaviors. Another thing which is very unpleasant and very visible is tooth decay. Oftentimes the first person who may actually identify that there is an issue with a person is the dentist. I know a lot of people might not realize that, but when you get, are getting your teeth checked, especially if you are inducing vomiting as your method of purging uh, with bulimia, all the time of that bile and acid passing through your teeth, it's not good for your teeth. So there's tooth decay that, that often is a result. Um, yellowing of teeth, bad smell of breath. There's a lot of not so fun experiences there. Um, and it's very visible too. Also, contrary to what a lot of people want to accomplish with bulimia, um, I'm just gonna throw this in there because it's very contradictory to the eating disorder itself, is people tend to gain weight with, when they struggle with bulimia. Um, and again, that's not what I'm trying to focus on, but there's often a lot of bloat associated with it and not only just bloat um, weight gain because of the irregular uh, things that you're doing to your body and, and not treating it the way that it should and not being regular in terms of eating and keeping it down. Um, so weight gain often is a side effect. And the last thing that I want to talk about here is intestinal distress and possibly even damage. So obviously if you are purging in any method, it's very, very dangerous for your gastrointestinal gastro system, your stomach, your, all that stuff. So, uh, so what I've seen, for instance, laxative abuse is your method of purging. It's very possible that you will not be able to produce bowel movements on your own. So essentially you're not able to poop on your own without the use of laxatives. Sometimes it's even gotten to the point where you'll never be able to produce a bowel movement without the use of laxatives. Worst case scenario is that you may entirely lose function of your bowels um, and not have the autonomy to use a bathroom on your, on your own. Therefore, you would need a bag attached to you and essentially poop bypasses and just goes right into the bag. So imagine walking around school or walking around work with a bag of poop on your side. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that to shame anyone who's now struggling with that. However, it is something to be mindful of that it could be very very, very much a reality if you are struggling with bulimia. I want to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not a medical doctor. Obviously, it's not something that I'm trying to take the place of. So don't take this as Bible. Don't take this as the ultimate, um, the only things that could possibly go wrong. But I am here because I want to remind you that I have seen things, these things actually occur. I'm a therapist and I've seen, for eating disorders, obviously, and I've seen uh, these things happen and I don't want you to feel as though it's you're safe from it. Eating disorders are not a joke. Eating disorders are serious. They pose some serious health consequences and at the worst case scenario, possibly even death. Um, and, and very likely could be death if you continue with your eating disorder long term. I hope that you found this video helpful or informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if there was any of these consequences that I mentioned that was shocking to you or something you didn't know. You can click my face over here to subscribe to my channel and I wish you wellness on your journey to finding your state of balance and I will see you in my next video.